so um, recently I've had a conversation with uh, a certain person in the comments about about whether or not um, bipolar disorder exists. Well, as you know, my stance on it is that they are misunderstanding the symptoms of the disorder, but of course there are some people who are experiencing um, something very similar to that and they take the medication and you know they, their symptoms are no longer there. Um, my argument has been in the majority of these cases the symptoms are a result of something else. But then there, there are the cases where the symptoms You know, they can't find the source of them. They, they, they can't attribute to their environment or a dramatic event that's going on. And you know, they attribute them to uh, something going on in their head that they don't understand. And they take the medication and it seems to be helping them. So there is, you know, complications. You know, it's not all there's. It's not all as simple as psychiatry is a complete fraud. But it's definitely a fraud. But it doesn't mean it doesn't help people. Um, it's ironic in the, the ways you can help people, as with medical marijuana, um, you can help people with AIDS. Uh, you know have an appetite and, and, and eat and you know, be more healthy than they would if they didn't smoke it. Uh, you can help people, you know, with, with different diseases, you know, from uh, chronic uh, pain to, you know, glaucoma and, and arthritis, etc. So, you know, my point is that These drugs may be helping some people in some cases, but there's so few. Um, the majority of the, of the cases are just misunderstood. You know, the problems could be solved with, you know, sometimes with therapy rather than medication. Sometimes the person doesn't need need therapy. There's there's other remedies for it. You know. It, it, by, it's on a case by case basis sometimes, you know, it's specific to that person, patient specific you know, information, and it's patient specific remedies and cures. Um, and so in some cases, you know, the problems can be cured. The problem is once you start taking that medication, is the, the person is now under the assumption that the medication is the cure, and when they're cured, they're, you know, say they changed their environment or whatever problem they had past um, you know they got over it um, th this means that they're on the medication still and they're assuming the medication was the cure and they continue to take it and they suffer side effects for no reason which happens often no reason other than to pay the pharmaceutical companies and psychiatrists and of course the lab you know there's a lot of people who make money the lab makes money because they gotta you know they gotta test your liver and you know, your liver and kidney and know make sure everything's in order and they got to uh, test your uh, your levels you know like if you take Depakote they got to test your Depakote levels make sure that's in order as well and so there's, there's a lot of a lot of people making money off this and it should be a small you know as with the marijuana the medical marijuana is it should be a small fraction of people who have serious problems who have no other way who take the medication but instead it's a, it's a large number of people so when she asked me you know, is she wrong for taking the Seroquel I said you know do what's best for you that's that's what I've always said I was just, I've always said psychiatry is a fraud but you know do what's best for you it's always been my kind of attitude toward it toward the medications toward the big pharmaceutical companies etc but 
no, if there's no other alternative, I'm for just shutting them all down, you know. And those small minority of people that actually benefit from these, these medications, you know, might, you know, it might be, um, it might reopen another, a new pharmaceutical company that's, it's more well regulated or, or has, it's, it's more, you know, efficient, it's more how it should be, you know, it's more official. And to, you know, and, and make it so it's not a very profitable entity. And so just supplying this small amount of people, you know, their drugs. But the, the system we have is a complete fraud. That the way we have the DSM, the way it comes into being, the way pharmaceutical companies profit, the misdiagnosis, you know, and they admit that they misdiagnose people as much as 50% of the time. This, that's what they admit. And I'm taking a higher. So I say they misdiagnose people 90% of the time plus. And that's due to the fact that their descriptions of the disorders are inc are incorrect from the start. They're voted into existence, you know. And are we, are we to sacrifice a large amount of people, you know, so a small amount of people who actually have these problems, you know, can find a cure, you know, because the, the pharmaceutical companies get more profits and supposedly that means they can do more research, right? So are we to sacrifice a large amount of people for less than one percent of the population, you know. Does that make sense to you? Twenty, twenty-five percent of the population is supposed to be drugged up and sacrificed for less than one percent. No, doesn't make sense to me. And it's not even less than one percent. It's, it's less than even that. It's less than point zero 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 one. The people who actually have these problems are very few, very far between. You get a crowd of a thousand people, and maybe maybe one person in that crowd maybe has mental disorders that that. As such, they do not understand. Don't say it's a chemical imbalance. Say you don't understand it. And say the reason why these pills help is because they drug that person and put them into a drug-induced mind state, which is now different than their uh, natural mind state, which means that they don't show the symptoms. They, they don't show the symptoms. They,